But what's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Now in today's video, we're gonna be learning about how to make a dice roller in React. Now React is my favorite web development technology out there on the internet, and many developers would agree with me. It is just so easy to use and great for building UIs, and it's just it just makes sense. So today we're gonna be building a uh, dice roller app. As you see here, you just click the button, and every time it just quickly, randomly gives you a brand new dice roll. All right guys, now the first thing you wanna do is make sure you have Node.js installed on your system. And then, um, you know, make sure you have some kind of editor like Visual Studio Code is awesome for this type of thing. And the first thing we need to do after we've done um, that installation and things is we need to go to a directory where we would like to create our new project. So for me, that directory is, uh, you know, my desktop, oops, my uh, desktop here. And I have a React Projects folder. And then inside of that, um, I would like to make a brand new project. And the easiest way to do that is just type in create dash react dash app and then space and then the name that you want to call it so for this one we're making a dice roller so i'm going to call this dice roller app so as you see here after we issue that command it's installing the necessary packages and doing whatever and eventually we're going to have a directory and a brand new blank react project so guys, now that you notice our installation is done, let's go ahead and get into the directory of our project. So cd dice roller app is the command to change into there. And if we notice that uh, it gives us a couple of commands we could run, you know, npm start, run build, test, and run eject, we're going to use uh, start to start up the development server and take a look at our blank React project. So we're going to say npm space start, and it should open up a browser tab for us here in just a second. So as you notice, localhost 3000 opens up, and we should just have like a super blank app, you know, as you see here, um, we just have that nice spinning React logo, and yeah. It wants us to edit this app.js, and that does make sense because that is the main file of your app. So let's go ahead and open Visual Studio Code, open up the directory here, and then go and find app.js. Okay, guys, like I said, this is kind of the main file for our entire project. So first thing we're going to do is go ahead and clear out everything in here besides just this div with the app thing in here. And then fix this bracket because I love when my brackets are uh, looking nice and organized like this rather than the other way and save it and you notice that now it is a completely blank uh, screen over here on the uh, browser side. All right guys, now as you saw in my test example from earlier or at the beginning of the video, um, you know, we need two kind of holders for images uh, to show the dice and you know which ones are, are rolling. We need a function that will generate a random number for us and we need something to actually like take that number and basically tell those squares uh, which image to display. So the first thing that we want to do is go ahead and go to the you know closest source directory here and go up and just click this to make sure that Visual Studio Code knows that you want to make a you know file or folder in here. And we're going to click uh, new folder here and we're going to create um, images. And in here is going to be all of our dice images. So guys, um, this code will be uploaded to GitHub and alongside that is the dice images that I'm going to use in this project. So I already downloaded some dice images ahead of time and uh, yeah, we're gonna import them right now. All right, guys, as you see here, we have um, all of our dice images up on the left side. We're just going to take all these and copy them. And then we're going to paste them into our new project down here. So now we have six different dice images that we can use in our project. So now close out of that stuff and you notice they show up in here, which is awesome. Now, one thing we need to do is import all these images to be able to use them in our project. And it's super easy to do that. We're gonna say import and then we're going to name it. So we're going to say uh, dice image one, for example, and then space from, and then you got to tell it which directory it's actually coming from. What we're going to do to import that is just say dot dot slash images and then slash the thing we want to import. And let's see here, you'll notice uh, dice one dot PNG is the name of the first file that we want to import. So we're going to say dice one dot PNG. Now we notice that it complains that, you know, it, it really wants us to stick with stuff inside of the source directory. So we can make a simple fix. Just take this whole images directory and then drag it down and put it inside of the source directory. And that's super simple. Now they're all in here. And all you need to do is just remove one dot from that. And now we should be able to reload and this will import just fine. So now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and just copy this a lot. And then um, we're gonna need it five more times to import all of our images total. So it's super easy to just, you know, keep copying it and then just switch the numbers since they're all coming from the same place. 
So just go down here and then just change each number as needed. So, you know, dice six, five, four, three, two, and one. And great, now we have all of those imported. Now, something else I want to do is go ahead and install a, a library called Bootstrap, which is nice for UIs, and it's super easy to install. And yeah, it's just great for making really good looking um, interfaces. So open up your command prompt here. And instead of uh, leaving this open, what we're going to do is just control C to stop um, the server from running. And in the same directory, we're going to type npm um, space I and then space. So we're saying, you know, node package manager install and then the name of the package. In our case, the name of the package is literally called Bootstrap. So go ahead and click Enter. And that should install in just a short couple of seconds here. And then we're just going to go ahead and press the up arrow twice and then start our server up again. All right, guys, our server is up and running again, but we don't need to look at it at the moment. So we know we have Bootstrap installed. We've imported all of our dice images. So now I think it's an appropriate time to actually start laying out the UI um, how we want it before we get to the functionality part. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and let's edit some of our HTML here. So inside of this app, we're going to first say uh, center as our tag. And this is just going to say anything in here is centered in the middle of the page. And uh, the first thing we're going to have is a title. We're going to say like, you know, welcome to ultimate dice roller. And, you know, if you're like me, I like to just keep both of these open at the same time that I'm editing it. And now you will notice that this shows up on the UI. And uh, yeah, let's just add uh, two. We're going to need two containers and a button to trigger this uh, you know, dice stuff. So let's create our container to hold one of our images. And actually, what I'm going to do is um, since these images need to be side by side, it needs custom CSS to kind of tell it that, you know, these things are in, in an inline block is what it's called. Um, so I think an easy way to do that would just be uh, div class name equals. Um, we're going to call it container. So container. And then just close those and click enter and and then we're going to take this and apply some custom css by opening up our app.css uh, file here scroll down say uh, dot container and open up these uh, brackets here and guys all we're going to do in here is text dash align is center and we're going to add some padding so padding is going to be two uh, rem for both of those and then we're going to have a margin of one rem then right below it, let's create another custom class. We're going to call this .square. And we're calling it square because, as you saw in the example at the beginning, uh, we have kind of two squares that are holding these dice images. So let's give them some properties that will um, suit us later for the UI. So the first thing we're going to do is just give it an initial height of uh, 400 pixels. And, you know, it's not a great idea to hard code pixels into stuff, um, you know, because, you know, you could look at it on an iPad versus a computer, and as these things change, it might be a little ugly and it might uh, conflict with stuff. But since this is just an easy tutorial, let's just stick with um, hard coding those for now. We're going to give these things a background color of white. And then here's the important part is we're going to say display is inline dash block. And that's just telling it that, you know, whatever has this square custom class applied to it is those elements need to be displayed in kind of a uh, like a horizontal block um, kind of form. So they're side by side next to each other. We're also going to add um, vertical dash align of middle. And then we're going to add some padding of one rem just twice here. That way we have some padding around our square. And guys, one more thing for CSS we're going to do is we're just going to set a background color. That way it's not blindingly um, white out here. We're going to just, I don't know, pick this kind of dark gray color just because. And uh, yeah, we're going to apply that to the entire app. All right, guys, now two more things that we're going to do before we go back to our project code is we're going to change the background color of the entire app. We're going to say body, open up the brackets, background color is this gray color. And then we're going to change the um, lettering or the, the color of the font as well. So we're going to say uh, color of the font is just white. That way, um, you know, it looks nice and contrasted against this background. And we have, a, you know, a not blindingly white uh, background for our app. So guys, go ahead and close down the app CSS folder and or file. And now we're just going to really stick in here for the rest of the tutorial. All right, guys, now inside of this container, what we're going to do is add two image holders. So IMG space, and then we're going to give it a class name of, and remember what we created in the back end, it was called square. And then just close that tag. And we're going to need two of these. So you'll notice we have two different squares here and they're um, on top of each other. 
And then we're going to have one div in between these two to give it a little bit of separation. So just open your div tags here. And then we're going to give it an inline style. So I have two sets of squiggly brackets. And what we're going to say in this is the width of it is only going to be five pixels. And the display is going to be inline dash block. And one more thing, guys, I noticed that I need to separate it with a comma, not a semicolon. So click save. And now if we full screen our app, you'll notice that we have two white containers for our images and we have a little bit of a divider in between. So it looks pretty awesome so far. Now, one more thing that we're going to need is a button that people can click. That way they um, can trigger the dice roll event. So let's go pick out a button from Bootstrap's uh, website. So we're going to say Bootstrap and then just go to their site and click on Docs. And here is where all the components are in the Docs about it. And we're just going to scroll down until we see buttons. And you'll notice there's tons of different buttons that we can use in our project. Um, I like some of these, but the, my favorite buttons in Bootstraps are these ones that have kind of a little animation when you hover over them. The code for that is simply this button primary thing. So copy that and then go back to our project code here. And we're just going to add that in right underneath our um, images here, right underneath our images, but outside of our div. So put that render the div closing tag, click save. And now we go back to our project. And we notice we have this button right here. This does not have the same styling that it does on here. So we must be missing some sort of import. Now, guys, in order for us to use Bootstrap, like it is installed, but we do have to import it just like we have to import these dice images. So go ahead and open index.js and right above the uh, const root here, we're going to add an import statement like this. And what this does is just importing the CSS library that comes from Bootstrap. And now if you go back to our app, You'll notice the button looks so much better and it looks just like how it looked on the docks. All right, guys, you notice that it did mess up our styling and we'll fix that near the end, but let's just focus on the functionality part for now. So go back to our code here and we're going to change the text from primary to roll dice. So do that. And now let's start creating the functionality for our app. So go ahead and add some space above our return statement here. And what we're going to first do is declare an array that will hold all of our images that we imported. So we're going to say dice images equals and then open up some brackets here. And then we're going to just say dice image one comma dice image two comma. And then you get the idea. We're just going to keep going down. Add commas. Um, and we're just building an array that's made up of these dice images. So go ahead and change the numbers. Make sure you have all your commas in there. But now we have this that is actually pointing to these images and we can randomly pick an index in this array and display it on the two different boxes. Now, in order to do that, we also need to import one more thing and it's called um, use state. It's a function that's built into the react um, library here. And we're just going to say import um, brackets use state from react. And you'll notice uh, Visual Studio was nice enough to automatically finish it for us. Use state is used for all kinds of things, but what we're going to use it for is to have two different variables that are in charge of keeping track of which file the images are currently pointed to. Right here below our array is we're going to declare two new state variables. So we're going to say const and then open up brackets here. The first field is the name of the variable um, that you want. So we're going to say just image because it's going to hold an image. And then the second thing is the function that you're going to use to change the value of the first one. So we can call that whatever we want. And we're going to say set new image. And that is going to be equal to um, use state. And it's going to have an initial value of images or dice images, sorry, at zero. So all this is doing is we're going to take this image variable, which has an initial value of dice images at zero, which is this part right here. And we're going if we ever want to change the value of this image thing here, we need to say set new image and then um, supply the brand new value for it. And guys, one more thing here is we're going to copy this and just paste it one more time and change some things. So this is going to say one instead of zero, this is going to be set image two, and this is going to be image two. And this is just to have two different variables that hold two different images because we have two, um, you know, dice image displays down here. All right, guys, now the next thing we need to do is create a function that we can call on to actually randomly generate our numbers. And um, then from there, we can decide which images to use. So we're going to say const roll dice is equal to um, empty little parentheses here and then space and then this little like arrow looking thing. 
now that we have that declared, um, we need to generate two random numbers and we can call on a default uh, JavaScript library function for that. So we're going to add a comment, say generate, oops, generate random number. Right below that, we're going to say var random num one is equal to. Then we're going to say math.floor because we want to round down. And we're going to say math.random, which generates a random number, and we're going to multiply that by six. So all that's saying is that we're going to generate a random number between zero and five. And that's awesome because those actually line up with the indices in our array. You know, this is zero, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we could just use that. Let's copy it one more time. That way we generate two different numbers and we're gonna say var random num two is this bottom one here. And like I said earlier, now we need to set these images, but the way to do that is to use these functions here to change the values. So we're gonna say set new image. And then just say, you know, dice images at whatever the random num one comes back with. That's going to co coincide with image number one here. And then we're going to copy this one more time. We're going to say set image two, and that's going to be equal to dice images at random num two. So anytime this function is called, what should happen is two different random numbers should be generated. And then both of those coincide with images. And now all we need to do is just use these image variables and then have the button trigger this function right here. And the way to use these image variables is so easy. All we need to do is click a space after this class name and we're going to say source is equal to brackets and then just reference the variable name. So image one for just image for this first one here and copy this line do it right here and then say image two. And now all we need to do is just trigger that function every time they click the button. So we're going to say on click is equal to and then just say roll dice because that's the name of the variable. All right, guys, now if we go back to our app, we should have a working dice roller. So let's go back here and we notice that this is not defined. So let's see what it's complaining about. Oh, one thing I noticed is that we actually need a var in front of this and now it should work perfectly fine. I noticed that I'm missing parentheses around um, random here. That's actually a function. So we need to make sure to provide parentheses. And now if we go ahead and launch our app, we notice we have two um, dice faces, so we do know that they're getting set initially when we load it, which is great. But now when we click roll dice, it should generate two random numbers and then change the dice faces. So you'll notice I clicked it once and now it changed it and they're both different, which is awesome. Sometimes they might end up being the same, but we can quickly change it whenever we want and it is working perfectly. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we might as well go ahead and change our CSS back so that it's not this blinding white um, background here. So let's go ahead and fix that before we are done. And guys, all we're going to do is go ahead and change this body tag to be um, HTML instead. That way it applies to the entire page. And then we're just going to copy this background color here and add it to the app class. And now we notice that if we go back to our project, the background is completely changed, which is great. Now let's just change the color of this text here, which all we need to do for that is copy this color white and then put it underneath app. And if we go back to our app now, now it is fixed. So now we have a fully working React app that rolls dice however we want it, and that is awesome. Now, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, go ahead and thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Uh, comment down below if you had any thoughts or suggestions for the next video. And with that said, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.